Greetings and welcome to another episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3DS Max. And we're trying to wrap up the back panel for this AT-AT Walker, and I think we can wrap it up in this video, but let's go ahead and just get underway. So we've cleaned up all the greebling in here uh, to, a, to an acceptable degree. I want to make this funny plate piece back here. Now, I'm trying to decide if I should go ahead and add all these rivets everywhere. I mean, I suppose we can. I'm just, I'm not all that worried about whether or not they're there or not. Uh, so if we look at other images outside of that, yeah, they're still kind of there on this model too. Though these two might be the same thing. No, they're not. There's some differences there. Oh well. So we will be adding those in. But that's going to be kind of repetitive. Okay, so let's create this funny little plate piece. And the way I'm going to do that is to start off... Well, let's just start off with a plane. Should be a nice way to do this. So, create. Uh, let's do... Oh, standard primitives, please. And let's make a plane. And I'll just slap it back here. And we'll move it out a little bit. So we can work with it. Now, does this have any divisions? <laughs> One or two. So we don't want any divisions for starters. And let's go ahead and convert this over to an editable poly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, uh, we've got basically a rectangle shape here. And then another rectangle shape that could extrude down. And we could extrude that out and pull this out. And we should be done. So let's just go off of that premise. In fact, here's how I'm going to handle this. Let's go to edges. I'll pull this edge up. Ooh, let's go ahead and edge constrain for now. Just while I do this, should make things a little smoother. So you go up to there. And then you slide in this way. And let's see. I need to kind of square this up. So we need to get that well inside this half of the at at. That's, I guess, in a pretty good location. Now, if I grab edges here and here, we can connect those. So let's do a connection, and we'll slide that connection over here. Let's grab this edge, and we can oops, switch off edge constraint for what I'm about to do. What are we moving in? Let's try moving in parent space. And we'll shift drag out a copy like so. Grab this edge and we'll shift drag that out. Now, let's get out of here. I'm going to rotate the whole thing back. So let's use object pivot. Rotate it back like so, kind of an arbitrary amount. I don't really care how far. Switch back over to edges. Give me these two edges. And I need to move. Well, let's make sure I have exactly who I want. Okay. Uh, we're going to move in view space. Straight down. See if that works. Yeah, it should be a good start. And then we'll switch over to vertices, and I'll slide this guy over. Now let's grab the whole thing, and just kind of double check placement. It looks like the whole thing might need to be sized up. It's kind of hard to say. Because if it fit in like so, don't move that, please. And let's see. Yeah, so these edges here and here can be brought outward a little more. I think what we can do here is grab these two edges and pull them down so that the shape kind of parallels what's going on right here. 
then these two edges, <clears throat> excuse me, we can move these in parent space and slide those up a little further, not too much, but something about like so, and I think that gives us the impression that we're looking for. Now, on top of this whole thing, I'm going to apply a shell modifier. And we'll just go with that for the time being. A little bit of funny normaling uh, going on there, but that's okay. I'm not going to stress that just yet. Let's come back down to the editable poly level. And we can show our end result. Give me this vertex. And let's just see what happens if I chamfer that vertex. It gives us this. Hmm. I'm trying to decide if I like that result, and I don't think I do. So let's do this instead. Let's convert this whole thing over to an editable poly. I'm going to start off by grabbing faces all throughout here and deleting them. Let's delete their counterparts back here as well. Now let's worry about the rounding we have on these shapes. So we have a little bit of rounding in this corner, actually rounding on all the corners. Um, not much here on the inside. But let's grab this, and this, and this, and let's just assume all the rounding is going to be identical, or at least it's going to be the way we're going to build it anyhow. And we'll chamfer all these, add a few segments, and that looks pretty good. Now, we could do some stuff to really anchor that off, but let me just see if we don't have to. If we can just grab you and do a cap and grab you and do a cap, and that just seems to work out. And if that works out, then I'm satisfied. So now, if we take a look down here, I think we just need to do this one more time. Uh, let's grab polygons, and we could go ahead and probably nuke this. Nuke these. Now I'm going to do two bouts of chamfering here. Let's do a little bit of chamfer right here with no segments, just a little bit at the corner. And then grab this guy and we'll do more chamfer because this actually has some rounding to it. And then we'll hit three for borders, grab the inside border first and cap that, grab the outside border and cap that. Now, let's grab an edge, let's loop, and let's chamfer, woohoo! Not at all what I was hoping for. Oh, it just didn't loop, alright, well that's fine. It didn't loop the way I think it should. What in blue blazes? Uh, let's see here. If I take a look at vertices, that's just vertex 8, and that's just vertex 21. Ah! Floating vertices! Bam! Anybody else? Okay. So now let's try that again. Ha! Huh, perfect. Sort of. Uh, let's do that. Pull this down. So it's just adding just a little bit so we have a, a softer shift from one side to the other. And I think we can now grab you, <clears throat> excuse me, and let me try this. Let's grab you and you and you, and let's convert these over to edges. And then I'll deselect these guys here in the middle. Hmm. Now that's interesting. Let me back up a little ways, see if I can back up far enough. Now include this in my chamfer, and that should solve that funny little problem. So, well, let's do it this way. And click OK, that's nice. Now, let's convert this over to edges. Deselect here. Run another chamfer. Cool. Most excellent. Now, if we get out of editable poly mode, we can sync this back a ways. Maybe pull it up a little bit as well. Let's slide it out. We're just kind of fitting it where it needs to be. 
And we've got kind of like a, a box edgy sort of thing up on top of it. So if I wanted to add that, what I would do is I would grab my slice plane first. And let's rotate that. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as we have a fairly straight edge up here. Go ahead and slice that. And yeah, so it's just kind of on either side with some funky, I don't know what that is, sticking out. So let's see, that should be good. Now let's grab an edge. Now if you take a look, it looks like we have some floating vertices here we need to clean up. So let's go to verts, grab this nuke. Whoa! Wozers. Oh, well, that would be part of it. Edges and loop and remove. Okay, so that's nice and clean now. Now, if we grab an edge, well, fail. Uh, let's grab erg. Okay. Give me this edge and this edge. Let's try a connection. Is it going to be straight up and down now? It's going to be a little bit slanted. And that's... Well, no. No, 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 no. I think I can make it be a little more up and down without doing anything special. Uh, let's slide it over here. Yeah, that'll work. And then click OK, but then we'll slide it back this way. And then let's grab faces, get this face off by its lonesome, and extrude out a little bit. Click OK, and then bevel. Click OK. And then there were these little guys across the bottom that were kind of like brackets, and I'm going to make those with little chamfer boxes. So we'll sink that in really far, maybe slide it up a little bit. Let's take the length of this guy and pull it down. There we go. Now, I'm going to try another array here. That'll probably work. Let's just do that. So there's that. Now we said we were going to put some little uh, bolts on top of this, little rivets. And they're kind of all over the place if you look, um, but they shouldn't be all that hard to put on. Let's just make them out of basic cylinders. So grab a cylinder. Thank you, standard primitives. And auto grid is on, so let's make a little tiny guy here. That'll work. No, he doesn't need 26 sides. Um, 16 is even a little bit much. Can we get away with 12 at this distance? <clears throat> I'm sure we can. So let's convert this over to an editable poly, and let's grab faces, and let's bevel this guy just once. Not like that. So... Click OK, get out of there, and we want to move locally. Now let's build an array for these. And click that off. Preview. Say to about there. How do we look over here on the picture? That's probably about right. I mean, I'm not going to get to the point where I count uh, the little guys there. So if you're expecting me to figure out exactly how many there are, wow, you're in for some disappointment. And let's grab all of them together and we'll push them in a little bit. 
Now we can get a similar design to what's there. If we get these two, we can drag them over like so. And we can get yeah, a couple of things. If we get, say, these three, we can drag these over. And they actually need to be over here. So let's undo that. And let's add this guy. Shift drag them to about here. Click OK. Then we'll shift drag this guy over, pull him over. So it's not exactly the same, but it'll be a similar configuration to what's actually on the thing. Now we got a couple of random ones. Like we can take this and slide this over, and then take this and slide this over. All right. Now, let's grab one of these, shift drag it out, click OK, let's frame up on it, align it to here, click OK, and that should be pretty well lined up, we can eyeball it, make it a little better, sink that down into the shape, about a similar distance, Okay, and let's go back to the array tool. Actually, that looks really good. So we'll click OK there. And some of these just get a little bit outlandish. So we can pull that over here and go up one and down one. And then grab this one, er, this guy right there. He can come way up here. There's three that sit right there on the edge, it looks like. And it looks like autosave is on. So let's drag those up. Give me one more. Put that right about there. And then just take one guy and kind of fix him right about there. And that should be everybody. So now we've got the same plate of armor on our model. Now let's see. What else? Well, we've got this guy that we need to kind of clean up a little bit. So let's do this. Let's grab you, get faces, and everything that's within about a five degree angle. We're going to pull off, make it into its own object. Let's get out of editable poly mode here. Select this guy, get edges, and I want all of these edges. And we want to remove those. So this is a nice clean object. Do I have any floating verts? Oh, all over the place. All right, and we can take the face to this guy, and we can scale it down a ways. And let's see, uh, let's jump over back here. Now we're just going to round this and put some blocks on the edges to make it look like hinges. That's supposed to open up. So let's see here. Let's start off with an extrusion. That's a good one. And click OK. Hit Delete. Jump to edges. Get this edge. Ring it chamfer it, and some segments, and bigger amount, click OK, hit 3, get U, cap U, hit 4, grab this, and bevel, it's all so easy now, alright, and that looks pretty good, then we're going to take the whole thing, and, well, I'm going to center up its pivot first off, and we'll just slide that back in there. And what else? Let's get some boxes. 
because boxes are always good for everything. And we'll make a little hingy piece there. And let's clean that up. So, boom, convert to editable poly. And uh, let's see, let's get edges, get all these guys. Let's chamfer them by nowhere near that much. And uh, let's see, go to world. Reference coordinate center, flippy, do stuff, awesome, grab this guy, and center his pivot again, or actually, no, we don't need to do that, we just need to grab like that, a copy of him up here, click OK, center him up in X, let's grab uh, vertices, yeah, so verts like so, and we're going to slide this out, we're going to make this thinner, Shoom. and that looks good. And let's get out of here. Yeah. Effect pivot only. Center to object. Boom. Center up again. There we go. Now, what else? Well, we've got some funny little tubey stuff that comes out here on either side, which looks like some super duper cylinder action to me and then really just some stuff that you can't see at all because it's all covered up with this it looks to me like a bunch of connected cylinders but it's covered up in whatever this foamy stuff is um, this is a little better and this even more so just reiterates what we've got here which is just some cylinders that poke out we've got some more armor plating here though uh, that we should take into account is it on this model uh, heck if I know actually it's not on this one but you know what I kind of like it so we could go ahead and add that, at least for now. And then we've got some vent work to do up here, and this should all be really easy to do. So yeah, let's just get cracking. Um, let's make a cylinder. You and me, come on. So boom, there we go. And uh, some more sides are good. So we'll make plenty of sides, 20 sides. More sides than a, a KFC. And we'll rotate this 90 degrees and rotate that up. Does it need to rotate up that far? Yeah, it could. It doesn't have to, but I suppose it could. And that sticks through like so. How about thickness and stuff? That's not too bad. Not really. And let's put that away. Slide this up a little bit. Still want it to kind of poke through. Now, convert to editable poly. And let's grab some edges here. Let's ring, do a connection. We'll do two segments with some pinch. It's right about there. And then we'll slide those out this way. Click OK. Grab this and ring. Convert to faces. Extrude. Local normal by nowhere near that much. Something like that. Then we'll bevel by local normal. And then I'll create that. Grab this guy, do another bevel. Click OK. Let's do an inset. Do an extrusion, and that's fine. And then another bevel. Click OK. So there's that sticking out. And then just for the fun of it, because I think we can get away with it, we could slide this out and just... Oh, not you. Slide that out just a little bit. Just add a little more depth. And let's see here. So we got that. We could put the little plates of armory stuff in there. Um, we can make other little greebly things. You know what, though? I'm going to cheat. I'm going to grab some pre-made stuff. Let's see. Didn't I make some nice things like that? I think I did. Foom. And let's frame up on that. And this needs to be capped. So grab this and cap. And let's do an align. So we'll click here. And I want you, wherever you were, to go all the way right there. Click OK. And you're too small. Oh, wow, that's terrible what I just did. Did you see that? <laughs> Funny. All right. Try that again. This time, not with a sub-object selected. Because all you'll do is embarrass yourself and click there, boom, and make this 
mucho bigger. Whoa, that's muy mucho. Right, let's say right about there. Yes. And moving. Let's put that here. And then we'll make a copy of it down here. And slide it inward a little bit. And let's see. Let's do some other stuff, too. We can probably get away with sliding this down a little. And, hmm. We can make another cylinder. But I really don't want to. I want to see if I can use this. Mostly because I'm lazy. Uh, now let's just make another one. So create a cylinder. And that's a little bit too big. So let's pull down the radius. And then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees this way. Like so. And we can just fit it in right here. We'll pull down its height. Now, let's see. Let's pull this out a little bit. Let's convert it over. Let's grab polygons here and here. And we'll do a bevel. Like so. And then a little bit of an inset. And then an extrusion. And then another bevel, this time with a bigger outline, and then another extrusion, and then another bevel, this time with negative outline once again. Let's grab edges here, ring, connect, well, let's connect with settings. And let's push these apart a little bit. Grab this edge, ring, convert, extrude, local normal, not that much. Bevel, local normal, and good. Now we could just grab the whole thing while we're just sitting here and make sure that we smooth it out a little bit. So there's that. Now what else could we do to make that look a little cooler? Well. Actually, I think it's going to work out just fine the way it is. Um, some things I do want to do, though, and we're, there's autosave firing up to help us out. And let's see here. I'm going to do an attach, and I want all of this to become the same object. there and this one last guy there cool now with that done we can push this whole thing back just a little bit now what else we've got the little armor plates that we we're gonna put in down here so let's go ahead and build those so I'll just start with a box and hang it off the side like that and let's just immediately convert this over so yeah, I see how that works. Let's grab an edge here and do a chamfer. And this will be a pretty heavy chamfer. Like so. Get out of there, grab the whole thing. Slide it up. Then we'll grab this edge and ring it. Do a much smaller chamfer this time. Click OK. Get faces. Grab this guy. Do a little tiny bevel. Okay, and then get the whole thing and we'll just kind of push it into the shape a little. Try to remember to grab the element and fix our smoothing groups. Okay, and there's a little bit of a bend in that, you see it? Which should be easy enough to do. I wish I'd thought of it before we did the chamfer, but I didn't, so uh, that's okay. The way I would do that in 
in the end, if I was already done, would be to start off by grabbing the slice plane. Just grab vertices, get this slice plane out. Already skip it? No, there it is. Bump. And we need to rotate out so it's perpendicular to our shape. So 90 degrees is fine. Let's pull it down to about here. Now, where does it bend exactly? I'm pretty much where you'd expect it to. So we'll pull it under here and then we'll extend the shape a little bit because that'll be nice. So let's slice and then get out of the slice plane, grab these guys, make sure we're in parent space, which we are, and we can slide that down. Now let's grab these guys and let me try something. Let's do pick. And you can't pick to that. That's all right. You know, I was trying to get all fancy. But we can just eyeball it. In fact, what I'm going to do is counter. I'm going to just like overdo it. We're going to push this back to here. So it actually comes out further than it needs to. I'm going to take the whole plate and counter rotate it a little bit. Just to accentuate the fact that the plate's there. Make it kind of hang off a little bit. Like you see there. Now let's grab this. That's the whole loop. That's good. Let's chamfer that just a little bit to help accentuate the change in direction. Switch over to elements. Adjust our smoothing groups. Get out of here. And there we go. Now let's see. All I've got left to do is a little bit of vent work um, up in here, and then there's a plate across the back. Then the whole back panel is going to be done. But I'm actually going to take care of that in the next video. So that's going to wrap things up for this episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3ds Max. I'd like to thank all of our member sponsors. They're the reason that we're actually doing these videos. And I will catch you all on the next episode of Modeling on the Fly. Take it easy.